Sometimes I find it awkward to say what I'm thinking. I find it difficult because of the sort of ways they do it. They don't always understand me. Last year, when I was thinking about about my annual health check, I noticed that my annual health check was a bit delayed. So when the text messages come, I don't think they realise that it's an ordinary <coughs> phone, it's not a smartphone. So I can't click on that link to make an appointment for him. Because I can't do text, I can't read text. I can't do that like people can. And I say, why you keep texting me? Can't you phone me? Phone me like I phoned you this morning. I got this form that I need, definitely would have needed support to fill out. Part of the questionnaire, you had to answer like five to six questions before you moved on to the next one. It was laid out harder for to understand. And they put it all in medical words. I don't understand what they're saying. I sort of had to ask staff to take over. When I've gone to the doctor's surgery for my appointment, sometimes, because where the secretaries do know me, and if it is my, going to be my regular doctor, and I think I need a longer time to talk to the doctor, they do book me a double appointment. I was at the doctor's waiting for my appointment and then I have to wait for two hours for my doctor's appointment. I was in the waiting area for, for so long and if you put me somewhere where I, where I can't sit still for a long time, I get really fidgety. When I go to my doctor's surgery, I do feel nice and comfortable because it's a, a friendly environment. But then if it's a, to a different doctor's surgery I haven't been to, I do feel out of my own comfort zone. Some doctors don't always know that I've got slight learning difficulties and that's why I need support with me to explain what they've got to do. But also the hospital passport I carry, they don't ever look at it. Once I was given the wrong prescription. And that's why I had to go to the hospital. So during lockdown when we had the annual review over the phone, no, no. his mental health was affected very Not badly. Anna. She took her Anna. time, listened to him, yeah. listened okay. to me. And yeah. she said she was going to refer him to a social prescriber. And she even said, I'm going to follow up on both of you because she could see it was affecting my mental health as well. At my surgery, the lift goes too quick for me to be able to get in there on my own. For me, it's quite difficult to get in the right angle with my chair. I did notice they've changed the bed of, that I can get on it now. Because I remember last time I couldn't get on the bed without support. And I was worried I was going to fall off it. He uses his DVD player to listen to the music. Because yeah, it's a distraction. And focuses his mind on the music rather than whatever intervention, be it blood test, injections, or any other invasive stuff that we do. It keeps him calm. With any health check, they don't tell you why the health check has failed or passed. They should email me about my result, which they don't. When I see my own doctor, she does have the time and she does talk nicely, slightly, and in, in terms I understand what they're talking about. Sometimes it makes me feel um, angry and that. Uh, you know, it's just the way I am, I get angry and I always say to my doctor, I'm going to take, or so I'm going to put my hand, head in the window. I do that, I say I'm going to put my head through the window and people say, don't do that. But that's how I feel because when you're on your own, you don't know what to do sometimes. I'm alright if someone explains to me what they've got to do first. They have to explain the reasons and what they've got to do step by step. 
It's not just GPs, it's to doctors generally. When you're in hospital or anywhere else, they need to put that in practice. Thank you.